Wait. Start start filming, and then I'm gonna pretend like I don't know that you're already filming. Okay. It, like makes it funnier. Okay. Is it on? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> this is my welcome video. <laughs> to make this video to say hi uh, and to tell you some things to keep in mind while we do remote learning for the next maybe three weeks uh, and maybe a little bit longer. Uh, so one of them, you might notice that uh, I'm wearing clothes. Oh, yeah, sorry. Shayna, my, my fiance has the, the camera and we're still new to this. <laughs> so I put on like real clothes. I even put on socks. Uh, so one of the things that people uh, think sometimes is like sort of a funny shortcut to do when you do remote learning is like only dress on top and then have like your pajamas on the bottom. Do not recommend that. Bad idea. More often than not you'll have to like get up for something like to go to the bathroom or to get a drink of water or because your little brother or sister interrupts you and then uh, and then everyone will know that you're wearing pig boxer shorts and not pants. Um, so when you uh, do some some kind of video Zoom thing or a Google Hangout with your classmates or your teachers, make sure that you're dressed in an appropriate way. The more you do that's like a realistic interaction, things like brushing your hair and um, brushing your teeth, although you know no one can tell that your breath stinks uh, over Zoom, it's still a good idea because you know if your breath stinks. Um, and you'll maybe be acting uh, a little bit less confident. Um, all right. So let me introduce my quarantine companions uh, and tell you a little bit about some of the projects I've been up to. So first is, I'll bring him over. Ugh, Mikey. Can you see him? Yeah. This is Mikey Emerson. He's an elderly dachshund. He can see out of this eye and not that eye, which means he can only make left turns. Um, he's been preparing for quarantine his whole life. He loves how much time we're spending at home. So he's thriving under quarantine. Uh, and then here is my other quarantine companion, my fiance, Dr. Shana Caro. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Thank so, you. why don't you uh, back up just a little bit? Um, and then, why don't you tell me a little bit about what you've been up to under quarantine? So, Have you been enjoying it? I've been having a decent time under quarantine. Okay. So I'm a scientist and usually I spend the springtime going to Kenya and collecting data on birds in the savanna there. Um, but That's so cool. It's very cool. Obviously I'm not doing that this springtime. What an amazing job. <laughs> um, so instead, this springtime, I am <laughs> spending a lot of time on my laptop uh, looking at the data I collected in previous years and trying to analyze it and ask questions um, and answer my questions. Okay, data and analyzing it. So like, what do you actually do all day? So all day, I enter data into Excel. So I don't know if you guys use Excel at all, but it's a, a spreadsheet and I just sure. like type in a bunch of information and then I do a bunch of statistics on it. Ugh, uh, God, and that sounds so boring. Oh. <laughs> It's actually pretty fun if you're a scientist. I don't know about that. That feels like a lie. Um, so, some other things that we've been doing to, uh, to pass the time is having debates about whether or not universal basic income is the solution to the American economy. Um, I've been designing a cabin that maybe we could move to someday. Uh, here's my first design. It's not, not particularly developed. And I'm getting more and more intense and I can't wait to be a full-blown amateur architect. Uh, I've also been doing a lot of writing for Teach About Women and also just like a lot of reading and relaxing because you can't be productive all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh, so the main point of this video is I'm going to teach you how to make bread. That is actually what we're doing here. I'm going to show you how to make bread. Uh, it's something we talked about in my feminism class a bunch and I thought it'd be fun to show you because with all the time we've been having inside we've had a lot of time to bake. Alright, so what you need to make bread is flour. Uh, it can be all-purpose or bread flour, it doesn't really matter. Uh, 
bread flour has more protein in it, and the protein is gluten. So if you want more gluten and more kind of chewy bread, use bread flour, but it doesn't actually matter that much. Yeast, tiny freeze-dried bacteria. Salt, for flavor. Uh, and a little bit of oil to help the bread kind of um, bind together and actually also give it um, a good flavor. And then a little bit of sugar or honey uh, to speed the process along, okay? Because yeast love eating sugar. All right, so let's start. I'm gonna show you the like basic principles because actually bread is pretty hard to mess up um, as long as you have like vague ratios uh, in place. So we're gonna start with our flour. Thank you. Okay. So, this is my flour. It has a leak in it, so I put it into this uh, paper bag. Uh, so, we're going to do two cups of, or excuse me, four cups of flour. Okay. One. Two. Notice I'm not being super careful about filling up the flour cup like exactly or something like that because you'll see it doesn't really matter because what you just need to make sure to do is um, have about double the flour that you have, um, as, as you have water. Okay. Now I've lost count, but these were pretty tiny cups because there's not that much flour left. I'm going to put it back in my fridge. Okay, I'm gonna put one packet of yeast in. What's up, babe? To mix with the water first. What? Did you have to mix it with the water first? No, you can put the yeast in first. Yeah. <laughs> this is the second time we've done this. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get my scissors to cut up my yeast packet. Um, so these yeast packets, you've probably seen them. For some reason, there's only like one brand, Fleischmann's Active Dry Yeast. Um, it's what everybody seems to use and seems to have. I make bread a lot, so one day, like two years ago, I bought uh, this thing, this like industrial sized uh, amount of yeast, um, and I make bread like once a week and I still haven't used it. So here we go. All right, but so one packet, it says here on the back, is approximately two teaspoons of yeast. Okay, I'm gonna put this in. So I learned from watching the Great British Bake that you put your yeast on one side of your flour and then your salt, which I'm going to put eh, like, a teaspoon, like a tablespoon, a tablespoon of salt, maybe a little bit less, um, into my flour. You put them on separate sides because the salt really slows down the yeast growth. And what you want the yeast to do is, um, is it sort of eats the carbohydrates in the flour and then um, creates uh, like the glutinous chewy texture of the bread. Okay, so I put about four cups of flour in. So that was one cup of water. It's not enough. You can see that, like, oops, need a little bit more. Your hands are going to get real gross. That's part of the whole deal. Oops. Boom. Okay. That's like two cups of water. Whoa. Okay. And then you just, like, mix it with your hands. Uh, you try to get out uh, as many of the clumps as possible. Okay. And you can see it looks pretty like liquidy and strange right now. That's what um, you call like a shaggy dough. It means your dough is shaggy. Uh, this dough is definitely way too shaggy, which means that there's too much water in it, and I need to add a little bit more flour. I'm going to do right now. Okay. 
Boom. Boom. Okay. And you can see it's already coming together a little bit better. Okay, yeah. So, it's good. You see it's starting to kind of like form like a ball at the center of the bowl. That means it's getting closer to the right amount of flour. Now I'm going to put in just a little bit of olive oil. Olive oil helps it all bind together a little bit better and gives it a nice flavor. You're going to see it's really going to change the texture of the bread. Still not quite forming that ball that I wanted to form. So I have two options here. If I wanted to make a sourdough bread, um, that's a bread with like a lot of flavor, and um, you'll notice that like in the inside of a sourdough bread, the white part is like slightly shiny and translucent because it has just a little bit more acidity, acidity into in it. Um, so if I wanted to make a really sourdough bread like that, I could just take this um, and leave it for like two days. Um, and the yeast would form really slowly uh, and they would allow for a lot of acid to build up in the bread um, and that could be cool. Um, but what I want to do is make um, a bread that's slightly faster to make um, and slightly softer uh, in texture. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit more flour again. Oops. Have I added too much? Maybe. Only time will tell. Okay, cool. All right, so now it's kind of all coming together in one clump. So since it's all coming together in one clump, I can start kneading it for real. Okay, I'm not going to make you sit and watch me knead it for 10 minutes. I'm going to just show you how to knead bread uh, for 10 um, So the way you knead bread is like this. You put some flour on a clean surface. Okay. Boom. Okay, your flour down. Okay. And then you're just folding the bread over itself, like that. Okay. Sometimes it'll get a little sticky and that's fine. You don't want to over flour your bread uh, because then it gets really dense. Um, so let it absorb as much flour as it sort of tends to absorb and then once it gets if it's really sticking to you or something like that Or sticking to the bottom then you add more flour. I've got more in the bowl. So I can just do that sweet cool All right. Cool, and you do this for 10 minutes and You're gonna see that after 10 minutes the texture looks really different so you can cut the camera We don't have to make people watch this okay. Hello, all right, so I've been kneading for like 10 minutes um, and you can see that the bread is a lot more bouncy uh, and sticks together in a ball. Uh, that means that the gluten, okay, that, um, which is like the protein in, um, in bread, is, is developed. It's developed enough that it's, um, it's really stretchy. The, the stretchier the gluten is, the bigger the holes will be uh, in your bread. Because essentially uh, how bread is made is that the yeast eats the flour, uh, and then digests it and then emits um, carbon dioxide to form your little bubbles. Essentially like farting out carbon dioxide to form um, the little bubbles, okay? Uh, so what you want to do is have your bread be stretchy enough to kind of stretch out to those carbon dioxide um, bubbles. So that means not too much flour and, um, and then quite a bit of kneading to create the elasticity there. Um, so this is pretty good. It's still a little sticky and as you can see I'm now covered in flour uh, So I'm gonna just put it back in the same bowl. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on the bottom of my bowl Stick the ball in like that to get it coated on one side flip it over So that it's coated on both sides and you can see it kind of smoothing out a little bit into an elastic ball and I like to make it look like 
a cute little ball like right in the middle. Okay. Um, and by coating it in oil, it prevents it from drying out on the surface and forming like a funny little skin of um, essentially like kind of like dead yeast, um, which is it's not that bad, but it's like a little gross. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna leave this to rise until it doubles in size. Since I didn't put any sugar in, kind of because I forgot and kind of because sugar isn't totally necessary, it'll take probably like an hour and a half. If you put some more sugar in it, it would speed up the process and take maybe like 45 minutes to an hour. Okay, so we're gonna leave this here. And we're back. Dough has doubled in size, so it's ready to um, rise for the second time. So at this point, the bread is gonna be ready to be baked in like 45 minutes. So I'm gonna start preheating the oven. Uh, you can go all the way up to 500 if you want, but 450 is usually fine. Got just like a standard cookie sheet, uh, but you need to coat it with something to make sure that the bread doesn't just stick to the bottom. Uh, what's important is that you not just coat it with regular flour at the bottom because that'll create like a kind of glue that will just stick your bread to the very bottom. So I use uh, this kind of special flour called semolina flour. You can also use uh, corn flour or something like that. You might be able to see that the, um, the grains of semolina flour are just a little bit thicker than regular flour, so they don't dissolve into the loaf. They stay separate. You want to put a little bit extra than you would really even need to make sure that there's a really solid layer at the bottom. It feels like you're wasting it, but um, it's actually just making sure that your bread doesn't stick. You can have it. Okay. So, oops. Put that here for now. Clean it up later. Um, <laughs> all right. So uh, then you've got your dough. You want to smash all of the air out like this. Boom. Okay. And smash it down. And it has this wonderful fluffiness to it now. Okay. Get rid of the bowl. Gonna clean that. Okay. Um, and now it's just kind of fun to play with. And you can play with it a little bit like pizza dough if you want. Um, <laughs> it has this really nice elasticity. Okay. And that elasticity is from the protein that's formed uh, while it was rising, which is um, gluten, which some of y'all are gluten free, in which case this bread is not for you. Okay. Um, I wanted to put some spices into my bread to make it taste better. We were out of rosemary, which is always a good choice, so instead I have a bunch of thyme. Uh, you can put any, like lots of different spices into breads. I really like the spices that come from the Mediterranean, like thyme, um, oregano, even basil or rosemary, okay, to give it nice kind of Italian flavors. Okay, so I cover my bread with the thyme, and then I'm going to fold it so that the thyme gets distributed sort of evenly. There we go, just folding over. You see how bouncy and elastic the bread is, which is so cool. It's so cool to see the chemical composition of all of these ingredients change. This is just water, flour, salt, and yeast. Okay, all right, now I've got it into this wonderful little bowl, this wonderful little, <laughs> this wonderful little dough ball here uh, that's really, really, really bouncy back. So I'm gonna make it into as much of a circle as I can, because I think that looks nice, but you can make it into like whatever shape. Um, you can even make uh, and it's like a baguette shape. I can show you how to do that if you want. Um, just ask me and I'll show you how to do it. Here you go. Okay, so I'm placing it in the middle of my semolina flour. Now, here's the trick. How you, how you give bread a crust. You need uh, more flour. Ooh, where's my flour? One moment. Just getting it out of my fridge. Okay, so you need just regular flour for the top. The way that you give uh, bread a crust is that you um, you coat the uh, the raw dough with just a little bit um, of extra flour. You can either use the same flour that you use for the bread, not semolina flour, uh, or you can use rice flour. is actually the best. It gives the best crust. Um, so you just kind of coat it gently. It's this cute little ball. 
might put you might end up putting a little extra on, and that's fine. Okay, you can smooth it out as much as you want, but while it expands in its second rise, it will actually um, become smoother. If you really feel that it's important to you that um, it be really really smooth for fun or because you're trying to impress somebody, uh, you can coat your fingers with water. And, um, and smooth over the whole thing and then add another layer of, um, of just dry loose flour like this and that is fine. Okay, so we're going to leave that for about half an hour, 45 minutes until it um, again sort of maybe not doubles in size but almost doubles in size. Uh, you don't really have to cover it with anything because the flour layer is protecting it but just in case, I don't know, a fly or something comes in. I'm going to just um, cover it again with my cloth and then I'm going to put everything away because we got to make sure to clean up a lot when we're doing all this cooking uh, and then I'll show you um, one more step and what to do to, when you put your bread in the oven. All right, thanks. So um, Dr. Carol, tell me some of the things. So we've been having kind of a fun time in quarantine, right? We get yeah. to hang out and play a lot of board games, do projects playing lots of board games. Yeah. Uh, what are, but what are some, what are some of the bad parts, um, right now? What are some things you're worried about? Um, I mean, I'm pretty worried about my family members. So obviously, you know, this disease affects everyone, but it's more dangerous for grandparents and parents right now, maybe than for people our age. Mm -hmm. And so I am pretty worried about my older family members. And uh, my sister-in-law is a doctor, and so I'm worried about her on the front lines of this. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty hard to deal with. Uh, so, yeah. And also, you know, I love our apartment, but it's very easy to go stir crazy <laughs> in a one-bedroom apartment. And what are you talking about? You have such great company. <laughs> that's true. But still, even yeah. with the best company in the world, it can be really... Difficult, and I think it's good to take time to just be by yourself, whether it's reading alone in your room for a bit or going for a walk, staying six feet away from everybody else. Uh, but yeah, making sure you take care of yourself mentally and emotionally right now. Yeah, um, and that can mean um, getting enough exercise, which has mm. been very hard, right? Um, being um, pretty cooped up. Uh, but um, you can still go out for, for long walks and jogs, but really making sure to keep, um, as you said, like two meters or six feet back from people. Really at a minimum, um, there are some studies coming out that um, that, that might not be quite enough. And uh, the reason for that six feet is sort of the, uh, the droplet issue, um, that one of the main ways that coronavirus is spread is through um, tiny, tiny like droplets of, of spit um, coming out of people's mouths and getting into other people's mouths or eyes or just like in general on their faces. Um, so if you're more than six feet apart, you're probably out of droplet range. Each person. And right? so one way to visualize this or to help you visualize it is when you think about it and it's cold outside, if you breathe, you can see your, your breath making a little cloud of uh, warm, wet air as it leaves your mouth. And you can tell that like right next to your mouth, it's very dense cloud and then it slowly dissipates over, over space. And so if you're standing this close to somebody, if I were to in a cold weather, breathe out, you, my cloud would probably hit Georgina in the face, which would mean that if I am carrying the virus, she would now be exposed to the virus. And the further apart we go, mm -hmm. the less likely it is that those very microscopic, tiny water droplets are going to be able to cross that distance. And that's also why it's safer to be outside than inside, inside close to people. Um, because if you're in a confined space like a supermarket, there's less airflow and so the droplets can hang around in the air more and so it's even more important to stay far away from people uh, if you're in a public space that's inside. Mm -hmm. Your family members don't count uh, when it comes to this because you're definitely already sharing the same air so don't worry <laughs> about your family. Yeah, so each household is sort of like its own little unit so we do not have to quarantine um, <laughs> even though sometimes we do. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I think something uh, also to keep in mind is that we're, uh, we're going to be making the best of the situation and trying to have lots of fun and make cool mm -hmm. videos about crafts and making bread and continuing to learn uh, as best as we can. 
without actually being able to go to the Hewitt building. Um, but we need to also keep in mind that some people are more affected by this than others. Some people are more worried about this than others. People might have more elderly relatives or people that they know that are immunocompromised, or they might just be people who worry more. Uh, so we have to be um, respectful that um, not everybody is going to be able to have like a fun time and make a bunch of um, and make a bunch of videos and stay really positive on Zoom. We have to make room for ourselves to to also be sad and to be worried and to um, to kind of sit with the discomfort of the uncertainty that we're not really sure what's going to happen in three months or in six months. And we're back. So, ooh, look at that. My bread has um, risen, which means that all the little bubbles have expanded and it looks really pretty. Uh, I want to make it look even prettier, so I'm going to put slashes on it. Um, this is a much bigger knife than I need to do this, but it's just the one that's around. I'm going to make two, three, four slashes across the top. Uh, kind of, just because I think it looks cool. Um, but I think it also like allows the steam to escape. I think it has some kind of purpose. Okay, my oven is totally heated at 450. Um, and before I put the bread in, I'm going to do this extra trick to give it a better crust, which is that I'm going to put this other pan in. It's actually kind of hot, so it's going to come out. I'm going to fill it with water. Because um, I'm going to fill it with water and put it into the oven because that um, the water will evaporate and fill the whole oven with steam, um, which the moisture will create like a nice hard crust on the outside of my bread. All right, that's it. So I'm going to do this. Bread in the oven. It's hot. It's kind of hot. Whoops. Okay, super steaming. I should have put the pan in before and then and then poured the water. Whoa. Okay, cool. All right. Done. All right. So now I'm gonna make this for like 45, 50 minutes. I will just send you a picture of what it looks like. This is gonna be the, <laughs> the end of the bread making tutorial because this took so long. I had no idea that uh, videos would take so long. I was imagining this to be like 11 minutes and it might be way more than that. So now uh, Shana and I are going to try to edit everything we put together um, and make it a little bit shorter because otherwise I just think it might be super boring. Um, and uh, starting this week, for all three classes, ninth grade global history, global feminisms, and AP Euro, I'll be posting uh, little video lectures um, and guides about, you know, history and material uh, for y'all to watch. Um, but if you have any requests for like more personal stuff, or if you want to share uh, a more like personal video about how to make something, a crafting project, or a cooking project you've been up to, uh, that's cool too, because we have to figure out ways to connect, even if it's just through cameras and screens. Okay, bye.